in this lab in this session we are going to learn about data types so what are data types so they basically tell about what different kinds of data are there so it can be divided into three main classes so first is the primary data types and the next one is derived data types and the last one is user defined data types so we will look at first at the primary data types so there are the four basic ones are so the first one is char which represents characters next is int other is float and the next one is double so these are the four different primary data types where this is usually 8 bit long this is machine dependent again and it can be 32 bit or 16 bit this is float which represents some decimal numbers real fractions and this also represent fractions decimal numbers but it is has higher precision so this has higher precision so it is something like 36 so this has higher precision and this same number is something like 36432 so this is the lower precision is used as it can be represented by flow but there are many variants of this so we will look at them also so what are the variants is we can define char now there are two main keywords unsigned and other one is signed so unsigned and signed this means that only it is considering the positive numbers zero and other positive numbers and this means negative and positive numbers too so negative numbers 2 and then we have two more keywords so which are long and short so these so let's try to play with how so let's say that int is there so we can have a long int which means it is now a bigger number than just an int so if let's say int is 16 bits long int can become a 32 bit number similarly let's say if int is 32 bit in on some computer so short int will be say 16 bits so this is about long and short now we can have something like unsigned char so we know that char is 8 bit so it means we can have number from minus 127 plus 120 minus 128 to plus 127 this is 8 bit number but if i do unsigned 
care then it means it will be from 0 to 255 so we learnt about the primary data types like care, int, float and double then about keywords like long and short unsigned and signed which tells us about whether the number is positive or both positive negative and the size depends upon long and short so if I represent so it will be something like long int is the biggest then int is this one and then short is this one so this is the pictorial representation this is short int this is int and this is long int so other variations like in fact even like long long int is also allowed so now we will look at some thing about finding the size so let's say i say int a is equal to 3 so now on our machine let's say a or int is 32 bit number so this means that we can have 2 to the power of 32 numbers that can be represented and or let's say int on one machine is 16 bits so in that case the range will be minus 2 to the power of 16 to 2 to the power of 16 minus 1 so this is the range uh, that's how we find it out and let's say if I have let's see about character so if I have a care which is 8 bit so it will have a range from minus 2 to the power of 8 2 to the power of 7 so here it was actually 2 to the power of 15 and not 2 to the power of 16 because half of the numbers are negative and half of the numbers are 0 and positive so similarly this is minus 2 to the power of 7 to 2 to the power of 7 minus 1 so this will be its range which means minus 128 to 127 is the character but if I make it unsigned care so now the range will be because it's now unsigned so it's positive and it is from 0 to 255 so in case of so how we define now let's see a few things about type def so type def is kind of user defined declaration user defined declaration So when I say that okay let's have some more meaningful types and I make so the rule is type def type and then identifier So let's have one example so I type type def int as units and then 
type here float h so what happens now i can directly instead of writing uh, integer array now i can define using units array 10 so this is equivalent to int arr 10 and but here as units uh, we might be more comfortable with units which represents integer similarly we can write that okay age age of person so it now is equivalent to float age of person but it's a better way of writing because it's user defined and it might be helpful for coding so next thing that comes is enumeration type so enum type in which we enumerate a variable can only take a few possible values so we type enum identifier and we give it value 1 value 2 till value n so what happens here is let's say enum day and I know a day can be either Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So it can be only seven types. So I can write enum day and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday and Sunday. So these are the only different kinds of values the variable day can take. So now I can say that okay and um, day so day 1 and day 2 and then I can say that okay d1 is equal to Monday d2 is equal to Sunday so this way I can assign value or I can even check now that if d1 is equal to Monday then do something okay so and one more thing that we have to see here is that the default these are all integer types so this is a 0 this is 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so if I check if d1 is equal to Monday which is 0 so this is also correct so it means by default the first value is 0 next is incremented by 1 other one is incremented by again by 1 by default it's take from start from 0 then 1 2 3 like that so but if I want to change the order so I might write a num so like month I can say so okay let's now better we should start with Jan is equal to 1 instead of 0 Feb March April and then I do May is equal to 50 June July is equal to 70 and end here itself so it means now January is equal to 1 then February will become 2 by auto incrementation 3 4 May is 50 because of our assignment June will become 51 and July will be 70 so now if I say that okay num month M1 is equal to I can do July so which means M1 is has value 70 or it's July so this was about 
the enum type and we will end our lecture here.